Hi, my name is Ben Singer. I'm from Northwestern University. It's a thrill to be able to share our work with you today in this Authors Take video. I need to acknowledge all of my co-authors, specifically Louisa morales Nabreda, who did the lion's share of the work that I'll share with you today. By way of background, it's important to note that age is the dominant risk factor for poor outcomes following viral pneumonia. And this has become public knowledge, particularly historically in the face of influenza, but in current times during the COVID-19 pandemic caused by SARS-CoV-2 viral pneumonia. In our lab, we have developed a database showing that regulatory T cells promote recovery following viral pneumonia, but it remains unclear whether aging causes Treg cell dysfunction or whether it renders the lung microenvironment refractory to the pro-recovery effects of regulatory T cells. So to address this question, we leveraged mice that are aged and young, mice that represent something like a 70-year-old human versus a 30 to 40-year-old human as well as the influenza model of viral pneumonia in mice. And we took this out to a late recovery time point, 60 days after infection with flu. And what Dr. morales Nebreda discovered is that aged mice fail to recover because they fail to repair the injured lung. And she did a very elegant experiment that we refer to as a heterochronic adoptive transfer experiment where Treg cells from young animals were transferred into aged mice and vice versa during the course of flu. And what we found is that an adoptive transfer of young Treg cells into an aged mouse was able to improve the outcomes of that animal compared with an isochronic adoptive transfer or transfer of no cells at all. Interestingly, a transfer of aged cells into a young animal actually worsened the outcomes for those mice. So to begin to understand mechanisms that might be underlying these observations, we performed comprehensive transcriptomic analysis using RNA sequencing on sorted lung Treg cells in these experiments. And what we found is that the young response to flu is characterized by an upregulation in reparative processes compared with the processes that are upregulated in the aged Treg cell response to flu. Dr. morales Nobreda also discovered that there is a gain of inflammatory phenotypes within Treg cells. It turns out that Treg cells, or FOXP3 positive cells, in the lungs of aged animals gain expression of transcription factors and cytokines like Tbet and interferon gamma for Th1 and ROR gamma T and IL-17 that are characteristic of Th1 and Th17 effector programs, respectively. Finally, because age-related changes in the epigenome, specifically DNA methylation, are an amazing predictor of chronological age and age-related diseases, we characterized the DNA methylome of Treg cells in our model and found that genes that are regulated by DNA methylation in this system are those that are involved with repair, invoking an epigenetic mechanism underlying the age-related impairment in the reparative function of Treg cells. So our model is one in which young regulatory T cells are able to promote repair following inflammatory lung injury because they possess a largely unmethylated DNA landscape that permits transcription and activation of a reparative program. But in aging, age-related DNA methylation impairs the ability of the Tregs to execute this reparative program, leading to a state of impaired recovery. This is important from a translational perspective because going forward, we could leverage this youthful 
Treg cell in order to use it as a therapeutic via adoptive transfer or even in vivo strategies that leverage the epigenetic modification power of existing technologies to create a youthful Treg epigenetic landscape even among aged hosts. So thank you again for watching this Authors Take video from JCI Insight. This was a tremendously fun story to work on. I have to, again, acknowledge all of the co-authors on this paper, in particular Dr. Luisa Morales-Nabreda, as well as the importance of our funding from the National Institutes of Health. Thank you.